episode and you know one thing we like to do we like to keep the laughs coming joke hee hee ha ha but uh this is another side of the show bank show um we like to cover what's really happening in the world what's really going on in society and uh that brings us to another tragic murder execution of an unarmed uh black man just 25 years old goes by the name Ahmad Arbery just taking a jog you know just a jog for his health innocent little jog around the neighborhood and out of the blue Gregory McMichael and his son Travis McMichael tail him in a pickup truck hunt him down Drama ensues, chaos ensues, a little fight back from uh from a mod and they shoot him down like a dog in the street. Left him to bled out, left or excuse me, left him to bleed out, and he's now no longer with us. Uh this happened in February. It is now May. The video just surfaced. Yep. Uh supposedly charges are going to be pressed. Now, in May, when this happened in February, there was clear-cut evidence of this happening, video evidence. Nothing was done. Have they had the video the whole time? No. No? No. 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 This is the the first time it has been made known publicly that there was a video of it. But was it private? Like... I don't know. I think that's what he was asking. Right. I I don't really know. Because like, Cause that, that'd be like the Ray Rice situation where right. they had the video, but nobody else had seen yeah. it. Or just like how typically like whenever things like this go on, uh, the police like have the body cam, but the footage can't be released for X amount of time until right. the district attorney can review the evidence. I, which... I, I would imagine that it was there, but for some reason or another, it was still being investigated. And it was still, it had still been, been investigated as of right now. And that had just been decided to be brought up, probably. It could honestly kind of line up, you know, with the coronavirus and everything going around. I could somewhat I don't understand. give a fuck. I don't give I, a fuck. I absolutely feel I you. Like, I get it. But I'm just saying, like, I mean, you know how the legal system works. It's not quick, you know? It doesn't matter. Uh, with that video, you should be able to see everything you needed to see in order for charges to be pressed, in order for at least, at the bare minimum... These men be arrested. These savages be arrested. All I'm saying is, like, maybe not even the right people had seen that video until now because of all what's going on to actually put these things in action. But I, that, I'm not me, giving them me, a, an out for it. To me, it. anything is bullshit with them not being arrested. Any reason for them not being arrested is bullshit. Not to disrespect your take on it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I respect your opinion and everything uh, with us being brothers, but. Anything excusing them being arrested is bullshit right now. And I feel it. I feel you. Which leads me to ask, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do about it, gentlemen? What do we do? It's kind of a rhetorical question at its base, but I really want to know. I don't know where we go from here. What do we do? I ask... Our black leaders, I, I I even ask our white leaders, what the fuck do we do? Because right now, how I feel, <clears throat> I don't want to run with the mod. That's kind of the the hashtag created behind it. Run with the mod, kind of creating awareness to the situation. I get it. I'm not trying to thwart those uh, efforts, but I don't want to run with the mod. I don't want to hashtag Black Lives Matter. I don't want to say his name. I don't. What I want to do, since we have this platform that's built off authenticity, what I want to do myself, Randy Dorsey, Rated R Randy, I want to pick up a double barrel shotgun, take it to Brunswick, Georgia, and put it to the head of Gregory and Travis uh, uh, McMichael, whatever the fuck their name is. I want to blow their fucking head off. That's what I want to do. Because I feel like there's nothing. What else can we do? Nobody cares. 
They tell us every day that our life is not a priority. What do we do? I'm asking black leaders. I'm asking, what do we do? I know what I want to do. I know I don't want to march. I don't want to see these soft ass marches where niggas is self promoting and taking selfies and dancing and carrying on all that few, all, all those futile effort. I don't want to see that bullshit. I know I don't want to see that shit. What do we do? Where do we hurt these people that they understand? Cause they don't just uh, uh, not care about us. They don't just not care about black people. They don't give a fuck about white people either. It's just, it's more blatant with us because fuck us, right? But it's anybody that's that's impoverished with, with, with lack of resources, you're kicked to the curb, you're trash. But specifically here, it's a problem with, with black people being oppressed, right? Mm -hmm. What do we do? I don't, I'm, I'm asked, like, I don't know what we do. I know I want to pick up a double barrel shotgun, take it to Brunswick, Georgia, put it in their mouth and blow the fuck, squeeze the fucking trigger. I know that's what I want to do, but I know that's not the answer. You can say, Randy, that's not what MLK would do, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm feeling like Nat Turner, my nigga. That's how I feel right now. Randy, that's not what MLK would do. Guess what? MLK was becoming more of, of an extremist uh, closer to him, closer to his passing. He didn't die because of I have a dream speech. That nigga died because he was trying to get the white dollar. He was trying to teach financial literacy to his people and achieve that for his people. That's why the fuck he died. Which leads to the solution today. Hit these motherfuckers in their pockets. That's the only thing they understand. That's the only conclusion I can really come to. That's the only thing I can really think of that will hurt them. Hit them in their pockets. And even then, I just, I don't know. I, we need it ironed out. We need a plan of action. What do we do? Fuck the sideshows. Fuck people trying to promote themselves for self-gain. Gentlemen, y'all can, can take it from here. Uh, I damn that was heavy as shit. Absolutely. But, uh, nah, a motherfucking word. Um, my man's Randy is absolutely right. What the fuck do we do? Because it just seems like every year, every other year, we're in this exact same predicament, right? Somebody of a lower class gets accosted by somebody of that same class, and justice is not served. So what the fuck do we do, right? And that, that's, that's, a fair, that's a fair assessment right there, right? Hit him in the pockets. Main thing is is just coming like like you said with a plan of action. Whose pockets in specific? What specific companies, right? And are they so thoroughly ingrained into our society that we can't live or can live without them? You know what I'm saying? That begs the better question. You know what I'm saying? Because can the average person live without a Walmart? No. Can the average person uh, average person live without an Amazon? To be for real? No. So like I disagree with both of those. Ooh. The average person. Put I think the Walmart is fair. I think the Amazon is I don't we don't Am need Amazon. The I don't think part. we need it. They're making themselves a oh, monopoly. That, that's but, what I'm saying, because Amazon yeah. is ingratiating themselves so deeply into yeah. our society where they're starting to take work from the US postal uh, postal service. Mm -hmm. Right? Fucking wealth cap. It's not just a suggestion no more. This shit like needs to be fucking mandatory. This is ridiculous. We do, but I don't think that's the solution to this. I know it's not, but like, I mean, I see what you're saying. Like, I see it's where you're part of it. You know, what I I'm see saying? where you're going with it. But I think as long as we boycott anything outside of the essentials, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Whatever, wherever you get your groceries from, wherever you get your medicine from, outside of that, you don't really need. And you don't need Walmart to do that. You kind of do. No, you don't. What do you want to do? I haven't been to Walmart in. Honestly, I couldn't tell you last time. Well, I mean, I, outside of your groceries, outside of outside yeah. of wherever you get your groceries, outside of that, and outside of medicine, I believe anything outside of that is non-essential. 
Mm. But maybe, that's what I'm saying. Maybe give or take a couple other that's things. That's why you too. don't need Walmart. What, do you, what, what would you suggest? Any other grocery store. A local grocery store. They got pharmacies. Yeah. They have yeah. household needs, cleaners, but like pretty much a supermarket. You know what I'm saying? They are the same thing as Walmart, just probably not as cheap. Yeah. And it's a little bit. Maybe you have to go to a couple more places than just Walmart, but I mean, would you rather have? This I guess. Or I guess what I'm take the sacrifice of. That? I guess what I'm alluding to is Walmart is so convenient mm-hmm. that it's hard to like. It would be hard not to use Walmart. Anyway. I will say for small towns, it may be a lot more difficult because Walmart systematically went in in small towns and. Put everything out of business. Mm-hmm. Essentially, you can get everything in Walmart. And to also drive another point home, Walmart, Amazon, all of these like you know big corporations, right? They employ people we know. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They they are partially part of the uh, economic lifeblood that we know. You know what I'm saying? Like they keep the machine rolling. Yes, they get the fat end of it, but they do keep the machine rolling. You know what I'm saying? How many people do you know that work or have worked for Walmart, Amazon? Uh, How many of, more people could each of them employ, though, to make their work conditions better, to make, you know, and money-wise, you're not going to argue with me that Amazon or Walmart doesn't have the money to put that out. Why, when I go to Walmart, is there one register open? Absolutely. Why is not Why is there 42 registers if they're only going to have one open and the line is, you know... Across the store. Ridiculous. So you're telling me you're... I mean, it's just... I don't know. You can argue both sides yeah. of it, but at the same time, like, just as as much good you can argue for these companies is twice as bad. Oh no, that's what I'm saying. I'm not mm-hmm. trying to cape for these people. In the right, right. Like, the worst part is, is that like it just leads us to a uh, uh, endless conversation. It's a fucking you do, circle. But something yeah. got to. Something got to change. At the end of the day, some something has to be sacrificed. Absolutely, something has to go down. But. And what makes me ask this is like I get it. You want to hurt people where. Where it's gonna hurt the most, but like, how would that have a bearing on a? And it's not really an isolated incident, but on an incident akin to that of the Ahmad Arbery. It's not. It's not isolated in the slightest bit because it's millions of people across the country that share that same ideology as they do, mm-hmm. and which would have that situation end up in the same result. Mm-hmm. So I think you just kind of. I don't know, take the feet from under the, I don't want to say the man, but... The powers that be? The powers that be. Mm -hmm. And the powers that be have a lot of fucking money, and that's their bottom line, and that's all they care about. And at the end of the day, politics is business. Absolutely. It's a business deal. You hurt their business, and we make a deal. We have more leverage in a deal to make. It is a deal. No matter how... Case in point, the situation we're in right now, the coronavirus. I mean, everything that's going on right now. I mean, it's very clear that all this shit is just a big business. Yep. And like you're saying, like no matter what if, angle you're talking about, mm-hmm. and if the government's gonna help you out, we're gonna take a stake. Yes. Some yeah, of, some of what because, yours is gonna be ours. Oh shit! Because like I and I understand it from a business mindset, but like from an ethical mindset, like mindset, this is fuck. Is the government a business? It is. Okay, let me. Should the government be a business? No. Okay, that's what it what is. I was <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Especially like, cause uh, what was it? Me and B was just talking about this literally earlier today, right? There is no reason that there should be career politicians. There's no reason you should be able to go no. into a, a public office with a net worth of you know less than a hundred k and walk out of that office twenty thirty years later with that tenfold. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's no fucking way that that should happen. Because at the end of the day, all they're doing is civic duty. Yeah, and the worst part is they don't even trip off of their actual. Uh, they're they're servants to us. That's mm-hmm. what they're supposed to be. That yeah. is their number one job title. And yet we get put on the back burner as people, taxpayers, the people who put the money in their pocket. We get put on the back burner. So uh, me personally, I think that's where it starts. Absolutely, What's that? the policymakers. Yeah. But that's never going to change. It's, I hate to be Debbie Downer, but oh no. there is no hope. I, I don't think. Other than moving. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, this is, I, I'll talk about that another time. 
I think we're getting in a messy situation when we delve into money and world powers and sorts of Amazon and Walmart and stuff like that. And talking about putting a cap on it and talking about penalizing it, that's great. And maybe in some aspects, there should be a limited, you know, limited amount of how much money one person can make. That's fine. But it doesn't solve the problem of poverty. That doesn't solve the problem of those problems in those poverty areas. It doesn't solve any of it. It just solves people not making as much money as they are. They're still going to make money. So if you take... 50 million from them each year they've still made 500 million dollars and no aspect to them so if you penalize those people Mm -hmm. for something that would not help a property area in the long run then there's really no point no i I get it you know what this ties perfectly into though what mr yang oh Oh, good lord i mean i don't know i don't mean to uh to like promote or nothing but i'm saying like literally this is exactly his whole game plan Mm -hmm. was you know, if you are taking from these companies, take it and put it in the hands of the impoverished people. Mm-hmm. You know, and see, like, I, and I get that exactly. That's what brings me back to a point I made. What was that episode forty eight? Uh, where I, I was so. talk, where I was talking about the wealth cap, right? Yeah. I don't mean as in, oh, you've made this amount of money, now you're cut off. Mm-hmm. You know, now you have to give us X amount of dollars. Right. Yes. No. I mean as in. Either higher taxes, and then the worst part is, like I said, they'll run off to these sovereign nations and mm-hmm. hide their money there, right? Mm-hmm. That does us no good. We lost. You make them employ people. That's how you fix a poverty issue. It's not so much that people don't want to work. They can't work. Absolutely. There is no work. So if you create work, you solve the issue of poverty. Absolutely. Then we have another set of issues that we can get to. We can solve the healthcare system, mm-hmm. the justice system, so on and so forth. It's a trickle down effect. But first, you gotta fix poverty. Yeah, I, this, I absolutely feel you. Because with Walmart and Amazon, kind of what I was saying, like it's the same thing. They built off the same model. We're basically going to do something better than everybody else, and then we're going to expand. And Amazon, for real, like is really scary to me because they're working their way into every nook and cranny of exactly. everything. They've even got themselves into the military industrial complex. That's how it's scary insane. this is. Yeah. They are essentially going to be like Skynet. And with that, like, then that makes me automatically think Monopoly. Yep. And I know it, maybe it's not necessarily there's plenty of loopholes around that, but you can't have one person basically control everything just because of his company. And, and that's where I, I do kind of like what, what you're saying with the cap as in, you know, maybe don't let Amazon oversight be in, you know, what Amazon Web Services, Amazon this, Amazon that, you know, maybe you should only be able to have like five things that you can dive into as like a business or, you know, something. And just to effect. just to kind of bring this back. This is not an Amazon, Walmart, or whatever pod today. This is an Amal Aubrey pod. And people just like them. So, I don't know. I just, I just, bro, well, this shit is real, bro. Right, well, well, I was getting ready to get back to it. Obviously, there are a lot of lawmakers that try to say this will change the poverty level. And this will change the issues in those poverty struck areas. None of that works. It's a poverty problem, but it's also it, it's a race problem too. Right? Well, I was, I was getting ready and to I, ask you. Okay, but I was getting ready to ask you what 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 in both of your opinions, what do you think would be the biggest issue solvers for that? We're never solving race issues. Well, not race issues, but just well, those but issues. I'm, but hold on, hold on, let me spell. We're never solving race issues. People that do not like black people are forever going to not like black people. Correct. That's just going how it's always going to be. Which is why we don't solve it by saying you need to like black people. Right. Fuck your love. We don't need that shit. Fact. We need to infiltrate the system. We need to basically, I guess, prove our value with our dollar. Because that's the only thing that they're going to notice. So that is why I'm bringing up. You know, we're talking about business and everything. Yeah. It's not that this is what actually matters at the, at the moment. It's that that's the only thing that people understand. That's the only language people want to talk is dollar signs. Now, to as a rebuttal to that, essentially, 
that uh, essentially poses the ideology of black solidarity, correct? Mm-hmm. And me and you know that that is a that is a falsehood. Black black solidarity does not exist. Mm-hmm. It, it is a pipe. It's a pipe dream, right? Basically, uh, go into what you mean by that. Just yeah, my bad. For clarification, uh, there is almost no possible way to solely unify all black people of America. Fuck no. That is impossible. There is too many. The diaspora is too too large, right? And just to kind of interrupt you a little bit, mm-hmm. to think that everyone else is unified is false. Fact. That is an illusion. Just because white people and such and such and everybody else don't bring it up doesn't mean they're unified. I was gonna say I think that's like, almost impossible. I was like, there's caste right. systems yeah. amongst all races, mm-hmm. creeds, colors, so on and so forth. Because you you watch it with Asians, right? Mm-hmm. Asian people. A, uh, like who is like the most shunned Asian you've seen, right? Either Filipinos or Vietnamese. Same thing. Like now, when it comes to like the black diaspora, it's funny that black Americans get shunned the most, even though they've contributed are arguably the most. Correct. Arguably speaking, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, just mm-hmm. for argument's sake. And then same with like white people. Like for the longest time, who was the shunned white people? Italians, Italians, Irish, Irish and Italian, Jews. Yeah. These are the shunned white people, correct? Mm-hmm. So, so on and so forth. Like you're saying, unifying different races is it's an illusion. It's a pipe dream. It does not exist. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, it it does to certain people. And so that's where I draw a bit of an issue. Like when we like, oh, we need to call on our black leaders. A lot of people don't subscribe to these people's ideologies, line of thinking, so on and so forth. It's just, it just makes me ask the question, how do we solve this? How do we put differences aside and come and find common right. ground? You get what I'm saying? Right. Because when, this shit sucks. Right. It's fucking terrible. There's no way that we should keep having discussions mm-hmm. about this. There's no fucking way. You, can't, you cannot explain that to me. It, exactly, bro. And that's why I was saying, like, when I was calling out to the black leaders, it's almost... It's rhetorical at that yeah, point. Yeah, like, like, talking to yourself. Exactly. It's like, where are y'all at? Y'all do all this. We see you guys in the press, but you just there to make money. Fact. Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, you just there to make money and benefit off of our oppression. Yep. So when I'm calling on black leaders, I'm saying, I'm really saying, is there any? <laughs> and the worst part is, it's any, Loki, it's any black talking head. Anybody, right. you know what I'm saying? Doesn't matter. Celebrity doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Because they all, they've all done the same song and dance, right? 2016 during the fucking election. How many of them told us to vote for Hillary? I'm oh, with her. Lord have mercy. Even like, and we know that Hillary sold us down the fucking river Facts. multiple times, Facts. and they wanted us to go out and vote for her. Anyway. She's a changed person. The no. Dem- Democratic Party. Period. Exactly. We've ho- we've been the Democratic Party's whore for the past what sixty years? Mm-hmm. 50, 60 years. It's been a long time, and we have shit to show for it. Black people make up ten percent of the population in America. Yet what? Almost the majority of its unemployment population. We make up like fifty percent of it, like forty eight. Last time I checked. That's fucking ridiculous. That's what I'm trying to get to is if if we can get the talking heads to actually, you know, come down to earth a bit, right? You've made enough money. Stop taking these, these, the, stop getting your pockets greased. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And just like really think about it for a second. The people that put the money in your pocket, the fans, the, you know what I'm saying? These people, just put, put them in your mind for a second. And truly look out for them with policies that will help. Not band-aids. I'm talking about a full, a full cure to the fucking ailment. Real legislation. Exactly. Not this bullshit. Real legislation. That's what that's where it starts to me. Mm-hmm. I absolutely feel that. And going back to kind of the Walmart Amazon thing, not not necessarily them, but we need we need companies in general to step back up to the plate and treat us like we are prized athletes the working America because that's exactly Fact. what we are 
you, you're a free agent. You don't have a job or, or whatever. You're a free agent. You should be in the market to get signed by somebody. If you're able to work, ready to work, that company should be able to take care of you, especially these companies that are making billions of dollars. Why, why am I uncertain of my future? If I'm willing to put my life on the line, essentially, you know, give you my work, I need to be compensated for that fairly and exactly and fairly I should be able to not look at statistics and be like oh millennials aren't going to retire till the age of 95 exactly you know, I shouldn't see shit like that and to me like another like to build off of that right there's no way that these companies should be able to outsource these jobs absolutely all of these jobs you know what I'm saying Absolutely. Thinking of like all these different call centers, uh, credit card companies, they all outsource. Especially when you are outsourced, and and I know me and Ray have seen this absolutely, probably the most <laughs> out of all of us. But when you are working for the outsourced people and seeing the people that's actually working for the company, mm -hmm. not doing anything, sixty five years old, need to retire head ass, making thirty five dollars an hour. Fuck you, Bob. Fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. Let me eat. Anyways, that's all I had to nah, say. No. <laughs> talk that shit, bro, because that's, that's exactly what I Are you what okay? Are you all right? No, because I've watched <laughs> this shit too long. Like, yeah. it's, I don't, it's I don't, stupid. I don't know if you really want to divulge your business like that, but in, this, in these times, you're... You can cut it if, if it's a problem, but... but Furloughs. You're furloughed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. In times like this. Maybe. And kind of almost without notice in my, in oh, my yeah. case. No, he's right. got a random, day, like, an uh, hour's notice, maybe. Absolutely. The day before, I was supposed to come into work, and then the next day I get an email saying I've been furloughed. So and I didn't even know what was up, really. That's what happened to me, too, because, you know, it was, the, it was basically that day when everyone was deciding, you know, what's the limit? You know, mm -hmm. who are we going to let in? And I said, you know, I feel like they're going to come. She said, you know what, me too. And then maybe when I left early, because she said we're going to let you go early for, you know, because it's probably coming. And then three hours later, I was taken off the schedule. It's like, okay, wow. what the yeah. fuck? Like <laughs> fucking that. <laughs> yeah. Literally, Nothing. we watched our workforce in America get Thanos snapped. But guess what? There is no fucking end game. We don't win in the end. There's no one end solution. <laughs> exactly. Iron Nobody's finna we don't get, have Iron Exactly. Man. That nigga not finna get the gauntlet and yell, I'm Iron Man. No. Iron Man is supposed to be us as workers. And really, we already diving into it. So at this point, I mean, the essential workers are getting fucked right they now. They are getting hosed, Absolutely bro. fucked. Dry fucked in the pooper. Absolutely. <laughs> Ridiculous. No Vaseline. Bro. <laughs> Nothing but straight facts here. <laughs> but for real. No, because, like, this shit is terrible. These people, even though I get it, because, like, we work, we work technically on the front lines. They got to deal with po possibly infected people on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I just got to touch their shit. I can put on a pair of gloves, put their shit up, and then throw them gloves away. And I'm straight. I don't even think that's the worst part. They got to breathe around these. They got to be around these motherfuckers every day I don't with even, minimal equipment. Right. I don't even think that's the worst part, though, because, I mean, in Missouri, for all people get paid more right now than they do anyway. Actual, uh, actual factuals. Bingo. Only thing that fucking sucks about that is that that money runs out. That's it fact does, that. but it, that's assuming that your workplace is bringing you back, which they may not. Yeah, because what from what I've seen, airline companies won't recover from this. Yeah, airlines are. They won't recover. Yeah, like they're they're projecting them to somewhat recover to seventy five percent of their volume in the next three years, mm -hmm. not immediately in the next three years. So if that's just for airline companies, what are we talking about across the board from America? Major retailers have just went under. Under J. Crew just filed for a uh, bankruptcy maybe a week ago. Uh, Neiman Marcus, one of the leading American retailers, just went under yesterday. Yep, you're not gonna be able to get them bitches at Gorman no more. No, Gorman's went under a long time ago too. Long time ago. Mm -hmm. Well, yep. <laughs> well, who's next? Macy's. Well, Gorman's was before. Any of this happened? Yeah, yeah Gorman's yeah. was like Gorman's was ago? a Gorman's was a bad idea from the start anyway. But J C Penney's is next. J C Penney's probably about to catch the axe. How many Sears do you see? Fair. Brick and mortar oh, stores Lord. are dying, and guess who's taking that spot? What I was saying earlier, if they Amazon. Get Macy's dog. If Macy's is gone, it's curtains, bro. Bro, 
Pay, look, think about That's this. That's like designer for niggas, bro. Exactly. You know Payless shoes don't exist no more? Brick and mortar stores? They're gone. Yeah, they're they kind of needed to go. Yeah. I mean, but like that's who, they was for the people. For the, like for You're the right. class we, we've been talking about. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what they're there for. So when, when these stores go under, everything goes digital, right? Guess who steps in? The major conglomerate. That's where I'm talking about. We got to put a cap on this shit. I then, feel you. Then we got to rein these motherfuckers in. And it really goes right, it ties right into the separation of the classes. There is no middle class anymore. Exactly. You know? Exactly. The it's middle class dissolved. is no more. You are either poor or you are wealthy. And the way the last really, what, since probably about the 80s, the way everything's worked out, it's built for companies like this. Yep. To come in, swoop in, take over everything, and fuck everyone. Yep, and pay for everything for pennies on the dollar. Mm -hmm. And have, man, because distribution, man, shout out to everybody that works in distribution because... For sure. You deserve Bro, working whatever. in distribution just for a little bit, that is some oh. fucked work. I did not realize, like, things could be like that at a job place when I, when I was working yeah. distribution. There's no Absolutely way that the job amazing. should be that fucking hard. You can't go shit. You can't take a break. No. And they look at you sideways if you got a piss. Yep. Facts. And worst part is, what? You only getting like five hours a day. Exactly. And you feel like you're working 20. 18. Yeah, like you yeah. literally feel like you worked the whole 24. Facts. Insanity. Fuck FedEx, bro. Fuck FedEx. Okay, yeah, that's fuck. what we was all talking about. Yeah, yeah. Real. <laughs> fuck FedEx. Oh, fuck Sorry. FedEx. Oh, bro, we didn't already said fuck Amazon and Walmart. Yeah, Let's go ahead and keep the train rolling. Fuck, fuck FedEx. Purple Pledge. At least UPS got a union. But even right. then... Even then, these people don't get paid nearly what they should. And at the end of the day, that's what we need. We just need unions back, man, to protect the actual working class. And that's the shitty part, right? They done busted up all the unions. Mm -hmm. Unions are almost a thing of the past. They are oh, archaic in nature. Yeah, they're building it to where you 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 can't have you protection. can't unionize, bro. Yeah. You probably could, but you're gonna go through hell and high water to do it. I feel like unions were more meant to be for during the you know the the American Steel Age mm -hmm. when it was more prevalent that owners just absolutely positively fucked their employees over massively literally paid them pennies mm -hmm. to work 12 hours a day mm -hmm. that doesn't really happen anymore at least in America you get paid not very much it you don't get paid right, pennies. You get paid dollars when you, really you should be getting paid tens. Of I, I didn't say you get paid a lot of money. I know, I know, I know what you're saying. But like, but, if you count for inflation, we basically getting the same shit. You're right, but you're also not, you know, getting your hand cut off every five seconds. There, there are a lot of different things now that make unions less needed than they were back then. But there, I don't think there necessarily needs to be unions, but there needs to 100% be better human resources. Yeah. Human resources. And unions can go both and, ways. Uh, I would say, more so, I think more people should come up with CBAs. Right. Yeah. Collective bargaining agreements. Because a lot of times, unions get caught up in the act of bureaucracy, and yep. then that's just another level of bullshit you got to deal with. Well, and how many stories have you heard of people saying, you know, the union done kicked them out because they didn't... They didn't pay their dues. Or, or go with what they... You know, know, they didn't vote the I way mean, they unions them. can tear down companies just as much as owners can. That's a fact. Exactly. That's absolutely and so a fact. that's why I was just thinking, like, you know what? Eric, Eric Wright, CBAs is the way to go. Yeah. And I've been preaching that shit to motherfuckers at the job for years, and don't nobody want to do shit about it. Man, it's sad that low key we kind of become the old motherfuckers. Yes, job. bro, we really <laughs> are just the old are 26 men. Twenty six going on <laughs> fifty two. Yep. Hell yeah! Fucking because we to these nineteen you know year olds you need to be doing this. That is because like this the worst part, bro. Because we're out here, essentially we're in in charge of America. We are in the driver's seat of the car, right? Yeah. And we see the cliff coming, and we're trying to tell the people behind us, like, hey man, it's about to get rough. Hey. It go down. <laughs> and, like, the worst part is the boomers is in the fucking passenger seat. It don't. It don't. It, it, don't, it don't go, go down. down. Bro, it goes down. It go down. <laughs> Y'all just Bro, lazy. It goes down. <laughs> <laughs> And so, like, bro, we can see the cliff coming. We're trying to steer this motherfucker around, but it's like them, uh, the practice driving cars uh, where they got the uh, wheel over there on that uh -huh. side too, and they still got full control of the well, car too. Well, uh, the terrifying part is, is that we're one of the minority that understand that we have to put in the work to do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. There are so many people in your age group and my age group and those other, our age group 
that don't give a flying fuck. Sure don't. They Bunch really don't. Assholes. They're, you know, they're ungrateful for everything. I mean, we grew up in an era where parents gave everybody everything. Not us. But, but everybody else. But yeah, we grew up in that era. Yeah, yeah for sure. We grew up in the participation uh, trophy era. Which definitely plays, it plays a significant part. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never met a participation trophy I liked. <laughs> never. I ain't win. That shit out of here. Yeah, bro, I'm fucking I, I, I remember literally putting ones that I didn't win in a box, not on the shelf. <laughs> I ain't displaying that. Get the fuck out of here. Was that, was that a quote or that was you? That was me. When I was a kid, fuck that. No, that sounds I, like something you did. Yeah, yeah. No. Fire. I ain't. No. <laughs> I thought you were reciting I am. Oh, no, oh, I, I am competitive. Where did that I accent don't... come from? <laughs> <laughs> he is from Lebanon, Missouri. Dog. Do not get it twisted, honey. <laughs> no. All of it came out. Mm-hmm. I did not see a participation <laughs> trophy that I liked. <laughs> no, nah, bro, because I remember when I was, I think it was fourth grade, we won the baseball championship. And it was smaller than like half the participation trophies I got. I threw all them motherfuckers away. It was like, nope, <laughs> we won this one. I don't give a damn how big it is. Red State I won that. shows his face again. You're talking about a guy that got like four technicals in one season in the YMCA league in like the eighth grade. Son, so you got That's four techs. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. How the fuck you getting techs in a, a, a little league, bro? Amen. <laughs> you should be having emotional. Hey, you're busting my balls! <laughs> <laughs> and that was him, though. He'd, he'd slam the ball in front of the ref because the ref called a foul, technically. I, I remember one where... He'd get mad at me for some reason, technical. Yeah, I, we, we can go into different things on that. But I remember the one where I threw the ball at the ref because... I don't remember what it was, this but it was some like, bullshit. This nigga. I was mad, man. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anyways. Anyway. So... Uh, We've kind of elongated our way back to what we were meant to talk about in the very beginning. Right. So, Randy, we'll get back to you. What's your, like, how do you fix it? Well, what's your feeling? How do you fix it? Man, I don't know how to fix this shit, bro. I, there was, like, supreme honesty into me asking, what do we do? Right. I don't know. Me no. saying all that economical bullshit is just... Spitballing at this point, I don't know. Try I don't, shit. Yeah, like I really don't know what to no. fucking do. Does anyone really know what to do no. with no. the situation? And the worst part is, is that they would, it would just basically go down to like a semantic question because you're essentially granting a person absolute power if you do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you let them decide what we should do next, and then what's to say that that power won't corrupt them? You right, know what I'm saying right because we. The worst part is we're speaking on all this shit as if people really act on the regular with pure intentions, and that is a motherfucking fallacy. Back to it. So, yeah, we kind of just uh, really went into like deep semantic debates that really mean nothing. It really means nothing. Absolutely, it's nothing. just a bunch of hot air, bro. This shit is wicked, bro. It is, man. Like, how do you feel that you you're raising a daughter to she, come up in these times, bro? And she got to grow up in this shit. Man. Son. And shit from like the 1940s and 30s is is happening bro. T- to this day. Because like mm-hmm. on some real, you know what that reminded me of? Just not as gruesome. Uh, this whole, um, uh, excuse me, Ahmaud Arbery situation. Jasper, Texas, 1993. Mm. Remember that? Where uh, two men uh, chased down a black man, chained him to the back of their truck, and dragged him for about a full mile. Oh, yeah. By the time, you know, they uh, stopped dragging the man and found him, unrecognizable. There was not much left of the man. Torn to pieces. And the fact that we have close to a modern-day version of that. You mm. know what I'm saying? This was literally 26 going on 27 years ago. Yeah. And this is still going on. Like, bro, I seen a tweet from somebody, and he was like, that killing of Amar Arbery was a, a classic South Georgia lynching. Exactly. A classic, mm-hmm. a classic South Georgia father and son lynching. It's amazing to me that anybody. It doesn't matter. Like when you see something horrific, it doesn't matter what, who you are, what you are, race, creed, color, it religion. Does matter, bro. But uh, what I'm trying to say is, I'm like, sorry, from, I'll, I'll yeah, let you yeah, know, yeah, no, it's all good because you're you're absolutely right. It does matter. But from like my perspective, uh, what I'm trying to say is. If there's something just insane or heinous that happens, I'm going to feel for 
whoever it's happening to, right. no matter what right. they look like. And it's I wish, amazing I to me that there's. Like that. I I feel you because it's amazing to me that there is such a large group of people that, you know, could just count that off as you know. Well, I mean, wasn't a white guy. Wasn't a you know. Wasn't somebody that looked like me. Right. That's all it boils down to. And I'm gonna get. I hate to get to this point of it, but <laughs> fuck. That's what made me not have as many white friends like as I do now. Because when all of these things were going on, nobody was saying anything. Like, the people I called my friends and my quote-unquote brothers at the time, they weren't saying anything. I felt alone in this shit. Yep. You know what I mean? And now I feel like I got brothers where it's like, bro, when something happens, I can call up Ray and be like, man, you see that shit, bro? Like... What's really going on? We can really vent our stress, our frustrations out to each other. Yep. I can hit up B like, bruh, what's up with that? You know what I'm saying? You got somebody like, to carry the pain with. Yeah. Yep. And you need that shit. Yeah. You really do, especially if you like somebody like ourselves that really care about what's going on with our people. Yep. You need that shit. You need somebody to help carry this burden with you. Facts. And that, that was kind of leading me is like, I think that's why my stance on dating white women is where it is, bro. Because it's like, and it's not to say that if you do date white women, you're trash or anything like that, bro. Love what you want to love. All that good shit, bro. For real, for real. I'm not saying that. I'm saying personally for me, it's like I see everything going on and it's like I resent it. I resent them sometimes. Like, I, it's like I'm not, I'm not going to hold you, bro. Sometimes I, I just I just go about my day and I see white people carrying on with their day like everything is fine. And they have like no clue what's going on to what what's going on with my people. You know what I mean? And it's But I feel like, like how could you not resent that to a point? You know what I mean? Right. Right. And but you know, and I'm just like, man, your life looks so good. Like you don't have to worry about your people being you don't have to worry about a Lamar Arbery for your people. No. Yeah. It must be it must be great. It must be nice. It must huh? be nice. So it's like, wow. Why would I wanna have a child with somebody I resent? Mm. And on a on a on a more on a bigger scale, I get it. It's it's dope white people out here, bro. You know what I'm saying? It is. It's and so that's why I don't judge people that are dating white women and, and, and all that. But I'm saying for me, it's like, why would I want my baby to, why would I want to mix my baby with somebody I resent? But I think what you And then they go, they go to their grandma house who is all, who's, who's, who's white and she low key hate niggas. And she resent my baby. Why would I want to put my baby through that? This nigga talking to half of St. Joe right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. bro. Nah, I gotta lighten this shit up a little bit. But I feel it. Cause like, dead ass, bro. Cause like, especially coming from a person who was dated half. Of, half yeah. They make up like, uh, uh, I'm sorry, that was a bit egregious. About 20%. I, I was gonna population. say that was a little light. Oh, shit. <laughs> Cause yeah, they make up like 20 to like 30% of the population in St. Joe. Uh, mixed people. And coming from a person who dated a mixed person for an extensive amount of time, you you watch that first fucking hand, right? The fact that like your own flesh and blood got mixed with something else, and you in, like immediately resented them. What would drive you to that? You right. know what I'm saying? And that's not to say anything is wrong with mixed people, bro. I don't want nothing people to at mis all. No, nothing is wrong with no. you. You beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Like, Love who you are. You yeah. are both. You are one. Facts. You are the other. You are both. Yeah. Well, and and what you guys are saying is more of like a collective thing. It's not on a personal basis. Yeah. Like, no, like this right. is universal, damn near. Like you see this, it's common. That's what I'm saying. No, it's not universal. It's common. Mm -hmm. It's very common because you see this a lot with mixed kids. The grandparents typically don't take a liking to the father of the mixed kid, and then that creates issues, right? I seen that shit. I seen it, and it's just amazing to me that like, how can you shun flesh and blood like that? Right. That's yeah. That will never, never not baffle me. I but, feel you on that. Absolutely. But uh, we said a whole lot of words, y'all. You did. Yeah, I think we explained yeah, ourselves the best we could, bro. 
Uh, it sounded like Rapskis for the Podskis. Rapskis for the Podkeys, man. Uh, Podskis. Podkeys. <laughs> but, uh, no, nah, man, this is something uh, we can't run away from. I don't want to sound. I don't want to say that, but we can't run away from that dialogue. But it's got to be more actions that come into play. Yeah, can't just be a whole bunch you know of talking. You know what I'm saying? So it's got to be more. I think going to what you know. I think in these situations, you got to be uncomfortable. Absolutely, whatever side you're on, whether you know, you got to be able to be uncomfortable to really understand because that's the only thing that's going to make things change is doing something you never did before yeah. absolutely absolutely so I, I, I feel that bro but it's like just to kind of reiterate my point man I'm not running with a mod I'm not hashtagging Black Lives Matter I'm not doing none of that I want a clear and concise plan of action of what we need to do that's what I want and until I'm off with that don't ask for shit for me straight like that I feel it Strobanks out.